diarrhea and dehydration one of the most common enemies of the childhood let's start with the diarrhea diarrhea is defined as passage of three or more loose stools in 24 hours it's important to note the term loose stools as you can see in the bristol stool chart type 7 is called as diarrheal stool hence consistency and frequency both are important when we define diarrhea now coming to the types of diarrhea these are acute diarrhea that is watery diarrhea which is the most common type dysentery it's bloody type of diarrhea persistent diarrhea is a diarrhea which starts as acute but continues for more than two weeks mostly people are confused between persistent and chronic type of diarrhea hence in order to differentiate above the word acute should be remembered chronic diarrhea starts as gradual and continues for a longer period of time most common cause being malabsorption causes viral much more than bacterial cause due to this reason you would often have heard that giving antibiotics are of less use in every diarrheal patient hence must be avoided viral causes include rotavirus the most common cause of diarrhea in the world then comes norwalk virus followed by calisi virus and also the coronavirus and the adenovirus bacterial causes include e coli or specifically epec then cholera and the salmonella etc the other causes of diarrhea are giardiasis and amebiasis now coming to the causes of persistent diarrhea these may be infectious or non infectious infectious causes include in the world rotavirus norwalk virus and in india e coli specifically eaec amoeba and giardia non infectious includes secondary lactose malabsorption it may be due to complication of viral disease causing secondary lactase deficiency now let's move ahead features of small bowel diarrhea versus large bowel diarrhea before diving into this topic let's first understand how the food moves in a normal gut as you can see in the animation the food enters the foregut and then goes to the small intestine where maximum water along with nutrient absorption takes place then it enters the large intestine where very less amount of water and the nutrients are absorbed food here completes its journey and leaves the gut in form of feces Again, the same process is elaborated in these diagrams. You may pause the video and review this. Now let's move ahead and do the difference between small bowel diarrhea and large bowel diarrhea. Stool volume is in excess in case of small bowel diarrhea and less in case of large bowel diarrhea. As the major process of absorption is in small bowel only, hence the volume will be in excess if small bowel isn't working well. Blood in the stool can be seen in large bowel diarrhea since being in close proximity to the exit. Similarly, rectum being the part of it, so is the symptom of rectum like tenesmus which is painful incomplete feeling of defecation. As discussed, major portion of nutrients including fats are absorbed by small bowel only. Hence, steatorrhea occurs in small bowel diarrhea. Malabsorption, same as the above reason. Pain in small bowel diarrhea occurs usually at periumbilical area, whereas in case of large bowel diarrhea, it's slight below that is hypogastric. Coming to the color of the stool, it is again determined by its content, and as majority of the contents are absorbed by small bowel, so is the color of stool. Smell is again like color, as indigested content will be more liquid in nature, so is the smell of stool will be more. Hence, smell is offensive in cases of small bowel diarrhea and normal to less offensive in cases of large bowel diarrhea. You will notice it more in your surgical postings, where a stoma bag, if present on the right lower abdomen, smells terribly bad in comparison with a left-sided stomal bag. The remaining parameters like dehydration and nutrition deficiency can easily be understood by above discussion. Now let's dive into yet another important topic that is dehydration and the clinical aspects. Clinical aspects of dehydration 
as you can see we can divide dehydration into no dehydration some dehydration and severe dehydration this table is very important because our whole treatment will be guided from this table only now we will look into six parameters related with this although the table may look cumbersome but let's study it through diagrams let's begin first parameter the first parameter is general condition of the baby in case of no dehydration the baby as seen here remains conscious and alert in case of some dehydration the baby is on fire that is he is irritable but in case of severe dehydration the baby is lethargic and fatigue now coming to the second parameter that is eyes normal appearance of eyes if no dehydration sunken if some dehydration but very sunken if severe dehydration now let's see the third parameters that is tears baby with no dehydration has tears but some and severe dehydrated babies don't similarly our fourth parameter that is oral mucosa which is wet in no dehydration but dry in case of some and severe dehydration now coming to the fifth parameter that is thirst normal for no dehydration child increased rather the child literally goes crazy for some water in some dehydrated child but in case of severe dehydration since the child being lethargic he or she may have the thirst but is unable to drink now coming to the last parameter that is skin pinch test skin pinch is based on the turgidity of the skin in no dehydrated baby since normal turgor pressure hence skin returns quickly back to its position or in less than 2 seconds but if dehydration is present then skin may become lax and hence returns slowly in cases of some dehydration and very slowly in cases of severe dehydration these six parameters helps the clinician in determining the extent of dehydration in babies with practice one can master these skills of observation some other clinical parameters which support our diagnosis of dehydration are depressed fontanel decreased urine output weak thready pulse breathing is rapid and deep and distension of abdomen i have made management as a separate video to ensure that nothing goes boring or beyond our grasping ability moreover i have provided the links of the video showing live demonstration of these clinical parameters you can watch them practice it there and then and learn them do watch these videos these are who standard videos for education link is in the description the upcoming video is on management which is the most important so do watch it see you there